here today. It's good to be amongst family and friends and enjoying ourselves, basking in the goodness of God, realizing how faithful he is, how faithful he's been, and how faithful he will continue to be, understanding that he changeth not. I would like to welcome you to the broadcast ministry of Christ Community Christian Center Church, located 704 Brunel Parkway here in the beautiful city of Lakeland, Florida, where Bishop Walter K. Laitler, Jr. is our senior pastor. Our service times are Sundays, 8.30 a.m., Hour of Power service, and at 10 a.m., our main worship service. Also, Wednesdays, 7 o'clock p.m., midweek worship and Bible study for everyone, adults, children, and youth. Fridays at 10 a.m., we have our Empowered by Truth Bible study. Watch our services live on Facebook at Christ Community Lakeland, Sundays at 8.30 a.m. and 10 a.m., Wednesdays at 7 o'clock p.m., and Fridays at 10 a.m. Connect with us by video on demand, 24 hours a day on our website, which is ChristCommunityLakeland.org. Tune in to WWAB 1330 AM on your radio every Sunday at 12 o'clock noon to 1 p.m. Main worship service and 1.30 to 2.30 p.m. our hour power service. These services are pre-recorded. We invite you to come to a place where we are building people of excellence, empowerment, enthusiasm, and excitement. <laughs> oh, I love it when the word says, oh, taste and see that the Lord, he is good. Well, on your way coming in this morning or sometime today, make sure you get your bulletin so that you can be abreast of everything that's going on. But I do have an announcement here that I would like to say. Um, Pastor Mary Goodman, uncle Johnny Wilson transitioned on July 4th. Services will be held Saturday, July 16th, 2022, 10 o'clock a.m. at Old West Florida Enrichment Center in Tallahassee, Florida. Please, uh, you know, when you're going through transitions like this, because when someone transitions, it kind of transitions you too because you have to make an adjustment of not seeing that person again. And you have to make an adjustment. Of, oh, I'll call them and it, you'll, you have to change some things. And so I'm just asking and we're asking that you would just keep the family in prayer along with our dear pastor, Mary Goodman. Let us pray. Lord, we love you. We adore you. How great thou art. Lord, we magnify your name. We just thank you for being so good to us, so generous, so kind, so loving, so true. We also thank that you fight for us how you're so generous on one hand, yet you are a mighty warrior and you fight for us. That gives us the right to say we always win because you are fighting for us. So we thank you, Lord Jesus, for this day, this beautiful Sunday morning. And we know that there have been some fights along the way to get here. All these years of living, they don't always come easy, but we win. And we stand in knowing that we win. We are victorious. We are above only. We're not beneath. And we relish in that. We just bask in it. We adore you for reminding us how great you are and how strong you are. We do not serve a weak God. We give you all the honor, the glory, the praise. Thank you for people coming from the north, south, east, and west to come and sing with us to come and shout with us, to come and lift their hands with us, to come and get excited about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We thank you in advance for today's message. May it be food and nourishment to our bodies, to our spirits, to our soul. And we thank you in advance that there is a word today just for us. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Everybody say, amen, amen. amen. Let's do some praise and worship. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
Psalms 149 says, Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song and his praises in the assembly of the saints. Let us stand. We come to praise the Lord this morning. Testing. We yes, come to yes. raise Amen. our voices. We come to give glory to the God of our salvation. Amen. Praise the Lord. Are y'all ready to praise the Lord this morning? All right. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Let his praises fill the temple. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Bow down before. Let's sing unto the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Let his praises fill the temple.
Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. All hail King Jesus. All the Lord of Lords, you're the bright morning star, and throughout eternity, I'm going
that one more time and just sing it like you know the Lord. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. New every morning. Great is thy Bible says sometimes you have to be still and know that he is God. Right in the middle of your world, everything that may be going on around you, the winds may be blowing and the lightning may be flashing, the storms, clouds are gathering, but right in the middle of all of the activity, sometimes you just have to be still. translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. New every morning. Ooh, he is so faithful. What if you're going to sing it, sing it, sing it, sing it.
Hallelujah. Ooh. Sometimes you have to sit in it. We get so busy in life, but there comes a time when you got to sit in it so that it will go through every cell molecule, all your DNA. You need him in the mama part, the daddy part. You need him to go through. <laughs> go through. Okay, let's see. Hallelujah. Commune the Lord. He says when we do, when we commune with him, we're remembering. Keep in remembrance. Get your mind right so that we're able to do what we need to do. Remember what he did. Remembering his death, burial, resurrection, getting up with not just power, but all power in his hand. Luke 22, 19, and he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them saying, this is my body, which I, which is given for you. It's so personal, not for us, but for you. Whatever is going on with you, his bread was broken. His body was broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. His body endured a lot, but this scripture makes it clear that it was done for us. No one broke his body. He broke the bread for us to live. This is for us, for this elite mindset of knowing who he is. I don't care what no one says. You can't be the same once you meet Jesus. You, you're just not going to be the same. You're not going to be in the same category that you once were, a category of confusion, category of not knowing where you're going when you leave this earth, category of not knowing how to live. But he says, Rem, do, this, do this in remembrance of me because all that he did was that we might live this life more abundantly. Luke 22, 20, likewise also the cup after supper saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed, poured out for you. We must quiet ourselves and receive the depth of God's provision for us. And as we sit quietly, let us remember what Christ has done for us. And we thank him. And by faith, I receive and believe. I really do. I just thank him for it, and I'm sure you do too, because we are people of faith. For we look not at the things that are seen. Everything we see is temporal. But the things that we don't see, they are eternal. Here's this little song. Oh, my Lord, here we go. Lord, I just want to thank you. 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 And I want to thank you for all. You've been good to me. One more time. I'm singing, Lord, I just. Lord, I, I just want to thank you. Oh, Lord, I just want to thank, thank you. Lord, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for being so good to me. So good to me. Woo! Luke 6, 38. Let's just talk about this here for a minute. Guess what time it is? 
One more time, guess what time it is? Woo! Go ahead and give. Amplified Bible 638 says, Give and it will be given to you. They will pour into your lap a good measure. This amplified. Pressed down, shaken together, running over, with no space left for more. For with the standard of measurement you use, when you do good to others, mm -hmm. it will be measured to you in return. That's good to know. Mm -hmm. Lord, I just want to thank you. Lord, I just want to thank you. Oh, Lord. Lord, I just want to thank you. Lord, I, Lord, I just want to thank you. And I want to thank you for being so good to me. So good to me. Okay, we have three ways of giving. In case you want to give this morning, since you know how good he's been to you. Oh, yeah, there's some ways to give. I need some help with the ways to give. Well, the first way is in person. Amen. 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 That's the first one. The second one is you can give online. online. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Um, www.christcommunitylakeland.org is two. Number three, new mobile app. Download to your mobile device. Amen. 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 To do that, we have instructions on Play Store or Apple Store, depending on which phone you have. Ministry 1. Secondly, select Church by Ministry 1. Install it. This is step 3. Number 4, open it after you install it. Number 5, in the search bar, type Christ Community Christian. Six, tap, select this church button. There you have it. Go ahead and give. No excuse. And if you can't figure that out, there's a box back there. You can put your envelope, send it by your mama, your grandmama, your cousin, your aunt. I don't care how I get here, just get here. Y'all remember that song? Let's do our confession of faith. Let's stand. Everybody, let's stand. This confession will bless you. We say this confession sometimes, and uh, it just applies to other things too. That's right. Let's, let's, do, let's say it. Heavenly Father, we profess this day. Mm -hmm. We have come into the inheritance which you swore to give us. We are in a land which you have provided for us in Jesus Christ, the kingdom of Almighty God. We were sinners serving Satan. He was our God, but we called upon the name of Jesus, and you heard our cry and delivered us from the authority of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of your dear son. Jesus, as our Lord and high priest, we bring the first fruits of our income to you that you may worship the Lord our God with them. Father, we rejoice in all the good which you have given to us and our households. We have heard your voice and have done according to all that you have commanded us. Now, Father, as you look down from your holy habitation from heaven to bless us, as you said in your word, we believe that we now receive those blessings according to your word. This is our confession of faith in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Everybody say, kid, and it will come back to you. Good measure. the Lord. Everybody say kill. Yeah. Show sure up. Oh! 
church say amen. amen good morning our father in heaven we thank you for this time to gather around your word for the awesome privilege to preach the uncompromised word of the lord jesus christ which to us is as if it is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway health to our navel and marrow to our bones you sent your word and you delivered us out of all of our trouble and you have blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places as long as we can find ourselves and roam around in and make sure we understand that we are in Christ Jesus though we live in this world. You have given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through this knowledge that we have about Jesus Christ that we have been able to escape the corruption that is in the world through lust and because of that, we can add to our faith virtue, brotherly kindness, love, excellence, continue to add these things to our faith. Now we ask you for a special word of wisdom, how to put all this together and work out our salvation with fear and trembling, how to put it all together. You've already blessed us. You've already given us all things. You've even given us assurance that nothing by any means will hurt us. And for this, we thank you for this confident assurance that we are bold as a lion. And so we honor you, Lord, and we thank you for our privilege to hear the uncompromised word that it will be today. That is if God, the creator of the heavens and the earth actually speaks to us in our hearts through our knowledge of Jesus Christ. And with this, we thank you. And everybody said, amen. Say the amen again. Mm, turn this thing around. Say the amen again. Deuteronomy chapter 1, as I was getting ready to, I had done my studying and wrote my notes down and put them in the scriptures here, and I was, I will just tell you all this, I, I was showering, I was just taking a shower, and I just turned to the wall, and the Lord, I heard this word, vacillation, vacillation, just as plain as day, vacillation. So I was looking at this word, I want to look at that this morning with reference to Deuteronomy chapter 1. Vacillation. What is vacillation? You've heard this phrase, overpromise and underdeliver. Many times we overpromise and we under the, that was the second phrase along with this vacillation. We overpromise and we underdeliver. Vacillate is the inability to decide between different opinions and actions. It is the inability to decide. Give me one light off, I, sound. One of, one of them, I, thank you. It is the inability to decide between different opinions and actions. Say that with me, the inability to decide the difference between opinions and actions. Now, it's very important because what we're going to look at this morning is um, Romans chapter, look at if you will, Romans chapter 12, verse 16. Romans chapter 12, verse 16 is just a verse that I'd like for you to look at briefly. 12, verse 16. Be of what? The same mind. If you're there with Romans chapter 12, verse 16, let's read. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21. You got some opinions. You're vacillating. You got to make up your mind and hear what you're going to do. 2 Corinthians, and I'll back up to one. Yeah, y'all, I got to look back here this morning. Uh, make sure they get that. Right there. All right. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 20. So 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 20. Let's read. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. 
as though God, see, it's, in, it, it's not, in, no word is in the Bible by accident. And each word, if you just slow down just a little bit, it has a, 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 a mental picture will come into your mind. So he says, now we are ambassadors. That means we are in a foreign country and we are representing a nation and a king. And we are ambassadors, in this case, for whom? Christ. Christ is God in another form, in an out-of-body experience where he talks to himself and he calls himself Christ. So God said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. And so basically, Christ is always God in Christ. It's God who is in Christ. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. So he says, it's always, we are ambassadors for Christ. All right? As though God himself, the creator of the heavens and the earth. The creator of the heavens and the earth were pleading with, if God were pleading with you, we implore you on Christ's behalf. Where is Christ? He lives in you. The Bible says, Colossians, he is the hope of glory. On Christ, that you on Christ's behalf be what? Reconciled. Be how? Reconciled. To whom? God. You got to get yourself together to find out how you and God get along. Some of y'all don't get along with God all the time real good. Certain things God says, you get along with him real fine. Other times, you have problems with what he's going to say, tell you. And you're going to run into some problem by the time you get ready to vote next month and the months to come because you're going to pray for, you're going to might vote for somebody that you can't pray for what they want to do. And if you vote for somebody that you can't, and they tell you what they want to do and what they stand for, and you vote for them, and you know you can't pray for what they stand for, you are a hypocrite. You cannot, in good conscience, look at the scriptures and say what you believe about the Lord God working in your life, and then you turn around and vote for somebody else who will do the opposite of what the God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, and Jesus, your savior, has told you he wants for you and your life, your family, and your whole community. You can't vote for somebody else who does not agree with your scripture. Amen. Now, if you do, you're a hypocrite. And then don't, don't be surprised when you don't get your prayer answer. So you got to be careful about when you're voting. You got to vote what you pray for. And if you can't pray for what you vote who, for, who you're voting for, you got to change it. You don't have to change your party, but you got to change, to find somebody whose position agrees with you and don't be vacillating and agrees with what you believe about the scriptures and you vote for them. I don't care what color they are. It doesn't matter about the color. I ain't talking about no color, please. I'm not talking about party. I'm talking about your faith in God and what he wants to do in the world. And he'll use us. So he says this right here. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. And as though God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, was talking to you. He says, we're pleading with you through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf. Make sure in some kind of way you find yourself always, how? Reconciled to God. In other words, is God in agreement with who you're voting for? Is God in agreement how you manage your money? Is God in agreement how you resolve your conflicts and situations in life? Verse 21, read, for he made him who knew no missing the mark, nothing about sin. He didn't know about missing the mark, coming short, to be what? Sin. sin for us. In other words, wherever you have come short, wherever you have fallen short in your life, get over it. He took it in his place. He took all of your shortcomings. You don't have any more. If you were a fool one time, you won't be a fool anymore. If you were deceived once, you won't be deceived anymore. And if you did it knowingly, he forgives those two. And he took it for, he made him who knew no sin to be what? Sin for us. Why? That we might become the righteousness of God. Where? In him. As long as we are in Christ. Righteousness, we talk about holiness. Holiness, we get, we're going to end up with this word righteousness, just one or two words. You got the word boldness. The Bible says people who are wick, wicked in their minds, 
who twisted in their thinking, perverted, they twisted, they, they, they corrupted their thinking. The wicked flee and run from things when nobody is chasing them, but those who are righteous are what? Bold as a lion. So the boldness is your confidence that the confidence of a person who is bold. A person who says, without holiness, you, no one shall see the Lord. So holiness, holy, holy means to be separated, set apart, in a category all by yourself. And we are holy as a holy people. That's why we, it affects how we vote. It affects how we live. It affects what we believe. It affects what we talk about. That's what holiness means. It's not a, 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 a uniform or dress or a suit that you wear. That's not holiness at all. That's clothesline religion. But holiness is to, in your mind, you don't want to be like anybody else. You're in a class all by yourself. There's nobody in the world like you. And God has put you in a class all by yourself. You're separate, totally set apart, and holy. So once you start acting in such a way with that kind of confidence, holiness is, are the things that's produced by people who see themselves as being what? Holy. You got it? Boldness, holiness, uh, uh, faithfulness, consistent loyalty, regularity, predictable service. You're faithful. And faithfulness, the things you do on a consistent, regular, predictable basis, is what is the result. It comes from a, uh, the heart of a person who is faithful. And you can continue with all these faithfulness, this nest business, and then goodness. A person who, is, who does a lot of good things, they tend to, it flows from a person who believes that, they, that goodness, some good things dwell in them. Not only goodness, but kindness. Kindness are the things that a person does, and they continue to consistently do, do that because in them, they have a spirit of kindness. It's the fruit of the spirit. And not only that, but loveliness. If you're a lovely person, somebody, you know, and then friendliness. Lord, that's another one. Everybody wants some friends, but they ain't friendly. So if you don't have any friends, don't blame nobody else. If you don't have any friends, don't, don't, don't look in the mirror. Friendly people, if, you, if, you, if you're friendly, you produce friendliness. And people want to be around people who are friendly. Okay, and now so we come down to the word righteousness. So righteousness is what we end up doing, what we produce, like holiness, because we know that we are right with God. Therefore, the things that we do it, it is reflected in our righteousness. So our righteousness, it, it follows us into the voting booth, into the grocery store. When someone gives you too much money and too much change back, you turn around and give it back to them because that's a part of your what? Your righteousness. I remember the day I wasn't that righteous. So righteousness, like holiness and loveliness and friendliness and all these nest business is what, what people do and it flows from something else that you are. So he says we are the righteousness of God. Righteousness is what we do because we are righteous, we are full of, and we looked at the outline, we are full of, we are bound and resemble the nature of being right with God. So now, vacillation. In dealing with that, that we might be made the righteousness of God in the world. We are everything that God has. Say it with me. In the world, in the world. We, are we are everything, everything that, God that God needs. We are, we are. Everything, everything that God has. And without us, God ain't got nothing. He said we are what? The righteousness of God in him. So in the world, whatever we do, we reflect him. And therefore, through him, with him through us, then reflect righteousness. And everything we do, whether we're giving or whether we're serving, we are the righteousness of God. And that's why... We're looking at this passage this morning in Deuteronomy chapter 1, because in Deuteronomy chapter 1, in verse number 16, he says this, Then I commanded y'all, I commanded y'all to hear the cases between your brethren, and judge how righteously. Judge righteously. In other words, now I want to talk about judging righteous, 
I then I created another topic, you might say, uh, steps. Um, on, like we said, with 15 steps to the blessing. How can you walk? I, I'm a blessed man. I declare that because that's a part of my righteousness. Say, I'm, I'm a blessed person. Amen. Say, I am blessed. Amen. And I declare that I'm blessed Amen. because that's part of my righteousness. Amen. Yeah, I, I say, say it again. Say, I'm blessed. Amen. And I tell you I'm blessed. Because that's a part of my righteousness. And every time I tell you I'm blessed, God is telling me I am blessed through my own mouth. That we are the righteousness of God. They ain't going to see God. No one has ever seen him at any time. They have never seen him. They have never heard his voice. And they have never seen his form. But Jesus said, I have declared him unto you. I told you about him. And so I'm standing up here telling you also as one of his disciples. So he says here, now I'm going to look at this passage. I'm going to give you, try to get to all of them if I can, but it's about vacillation. And I want to show you the 15 benefits of the blessing or 15 ways to enjoy the blessing or you have to help me out with that part. Um, and verse number, uh, Genesis, I mean, Deuteronomy chapter one and verse 46, so you remained in Kadesh. This is verse number 46. Uh, it says, so you, let's read, so you remained in what? Kadesh. The word Kadesh, you may have heard Kadesh Barnea. It means holy. Holy simply means to be set apart, separate. And you remain set apart many days. According to the days that you spent there. Some of us have spent too many days where we are. We have spent too many days where we are. And some of us don't want to move. Some of us don't feel like we can move. Some of us are unwilling to move. Some of us feel like somebody else has to come and help us to move. But I want to just show you something about your own vacillation and what will hinder you and what can help you Move on. So we read now in verse number nine. This is a, an 11 day journey that they stretched out to 40 years. Many of you have vacillated with things that you could have done in a short period of time. But because we are vacillating, because we just vacillate, we halt, as they say, between two opinions. In 1 Kings chapter 18 and verse 21, Elijah asks the nation of Israel, say, how long? How long? How long? Are y'all going to be halt and vacillate? between two opinions, the inability to make a decision, to decide between different opinions and actions. So, verse nine says, and I spoke to you at that time, and I'm speaking to you at this time, saying, this is what Moses said, there are too many y'all. I alone am not able to bear you. The Lord your God has multiplied you. And here you are today. The Lord has blessed us. We have been multiplied. We have been increased. And in the area of increase, very few pastors, black pastors, African-American pastors of African-American ancestry, original Americans, you might want to say, they will not mention what's going on in our culture. As we make up 13% of the population of this country, and Mexicans and Americans and Latin Americans and Spanish, people of Spanish origin descent, now at about 16 or 17%. But nobody will tell you 
that of all of the abortion of Planned Parenthood and everybody else who's aborting these babies, that we make up 33, 32% of all of the abortions. 32% of all of the babies who have been done away with is fulfilled by only 13% of the whole population. Now, if that don't get your goat, but I stand here repenting to you and repenting on behalf of the whole church because we as black folk have been taught by a lot of Pharisees that them babies are bastards, they're illegitimate, and it's better not to have them here and all these other things. And then we shame the people because they did what was natural and what God said do, go be fruitful and multiply. He didn't say, well, now make sure you go to the courthouse and get some papers first. He just said, be fruitful and what? <laughs> we say, well, in order to multiply, well, you know, and, and if the truth be told, some of y'all was trying to multiply, but you just didn't, wasn't successful at the time. You was trying to multiply before you got your license. Now, if you want me to make it plain, I will. All right. So don't get on my nerves this morning. <laughs> and so we have, to, we have to let these children come here. We are exterminating our own people. And we shame them out. And the church is the main one. So he says, that's a part of your righteousness. So I stopped calling babies illegitimate. I stopped, you, what, what's illegitimate about a baby? The Bible says the children of the Lord, children are an inheritance of the, an, or heritage of the Lord. And the fruit of the womb is his reward. But religious folk can be mean. And here you are today. You, so we got to get converted. Okay? And here you are today as the stars of heaven in multitude. Verse 11, read, the Lord God of your fathers make you what? A thousand times more numerous than you are and blessed you as he promised. Do you know if we had just let all of these babies who have been aborted in the last 30 years, 40 years, 50 years since Roe versus Wade, 50 years, let them come here, we'd be the second largest population in this country. We don't have businesses. The only thing we can, business we can come up with is doing hair, cutting yards, and doing nails. You got to get in business, my friend. And then running for political office is another thing altogether. So here we go now with our text. Verse 12, let's read. How can I alone bear your problems, your cumbrances, and your troubles? So the first word I want to give you this morning is agitation. Your vacillation results in agitation. When you don't make up your mind and you halt between the inability to decide between the differences of opinion and actions, you get agitated. So the first word is agitation. And we'll list these. Agitation. And that means you have, uh, you got a problem. You come, you, you have issues. Number two, he says, and your burdens. Burdens are prophecies. Things that you are lifting up. You heard what I just said a few moments ago. You formulate your opinion. You lift up something. You have, you have, there's a takeaway. You're going to take away something from what I give you. Whatever you take away becomes your burden. Say it with me. Whatever I take away becomes my burden. And so that's why you can take, you go to the doctor's office. They tell you something. And whatever they tell you, Whatever you take away from that, that becomes your burden. Now, if you don't take it away, it won't be your burden. So, it becomes your burden, it's your burden, and you talk about it. You start prophesying. That's why the two words are oracle, prophecy, and burden. And then the third thing he says, and your complaints. So, the complaints are things that, that uh, contention, that you just, the controversies. That you're ready to you you strike a you ready to fight you're contentious and you're ready to fight so their vacillation is the first thing results in what agitated. you agitated number one you got some problems number two you got some burdens some things that you've taken away you want to get rid of your problems get rid of your burdens 
And if you, some people don't like to get rid of burdens because if they get rid of their burdens, they won't have nothing to fight about. They always got rocks in the jaws. They always mean by something. They, they, just, they just got something wrong. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing right nowhere. And they always got, they got an edge on the attitude and the edge on the disposition. And so your problems, your burdens, and your complaints, things that you're ready to fight over or things that you're ready to fight for. So vacillation results in what? Agitation. Number two, he says this. Verse 13, let's read. Choose whose responsibility? You got to do this. You must make a decision and not vacillate on it. Choose what? Wise, understanding, and knowledgeable men from among your tribes, and I will make them what? Heads over you. Go on. And you answered and me and said, the thing which you have told us to do is good. Read. So I took the heads of your tribe, your wise and knowledgeable men, and made them heads over you and leaders. Now, we do that every two years and every four years with representatives. And we vote for these people. And sometimes they are not wise. And they will tell you a lie with a straight face. I ain't never seen it as, I haven't, maybe it's just I'm more sensitive now. And I look at them, and these, some of the men of these politicians, they'll look at you, and they'll tell you, I think they believe it. And they'll tell you, and you know it's a lie, but they'll tell you a lie with a straight face. And you, we were raised to take, when a grown person tell you something, you better not dispute it. And that's in us. And so when somebody come with that approach, we, we default to, well, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna argue with them. I went, through, I went through that early on in ministry where people would come to me and they'd tell me, well, the Lord has told me to do so and so and so. He's told me to move on and he's told me to do this and he told me to go on and do. I say, he has? I say, okay. And then somebody else would come along and say, well, the Lord told me something. Well, after you go through about 10 years of this, I said, well, he, he ain't telling me nothing. Why don't he tell me something? And then I got, I got a little wiser. They started coming down. Well, the Lord has told me. I said, the Lord ain't told you nothing. You lying. It's something you want to do. If it's something you want to do, just say, I have changed my mind and I want to go do something, something else. But don't try to blame it on the Lord to give you uh, permission to go do something so that somebody will, you will get them to agree with you going because you ain't got the courage to say, I've changed my mind and I want to do something different. So now I just tell people, well, I know enough word now. So what you saying, what you say God told you to do, you lying. That ain't what he told you. He, he don't even talk like that. <laughs> and so I told him that. So now, so now you're going, we're going to elect representatives across the country. And remember now, if you, if you elect fools and put them in charge of your life, you deserve just, you get just what you deserve. I'll show you what, what I'm saying. Look at Isaiah, if you will. In Isaiah chapter 3 and verse 2. Well, I go back to verse 1. Verse 1 says, verse 1, chapter 3, verse 1. For behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, Jerusalem had gotten so far away from God, the Bible says the nation that forgets God will be turned into hell. I want to live in a peaceful place. I have been to enough countries to know that America is blessed. When I get back from these other countries, when I come back, I want to bend down like the Pope and kiss the ground. The streets are wider, the stores are full, the gas station got gas. I mean, the food is good. I mean, it's just a lot. To appreciate when you come back home. And if you ain't been nowhere, you think we got it bad here. And a lot of people telling you it's bad here ain't been nowhere. They ain't been nowhere. So he says, take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stock and the store. Take away what they think they got. 
You can't tell them nothing and they won't, they, they're not, they don't realize how they are the righteousness of God. Take away the stock, that's the supermarket, the stock market, and the grocery store, the whole supply of bread, and the whole supply of water, the mighty man, that's the military, and the men of war, that's the army, read, the judge, that's a good judge, and what? The prophet, that's a good preacher and a prophet. Take away from me these what? The diviners, that's the root man and everybody who prophesy on the 10 spies news network. And they always saying a whole lot of stuff. And the what? The elder, the old people who now, we don't want to hear them no more either. Go on, the captain of 50 and the cap and the honor of men, commissioners and so forth and so on. The counselors and what? The skillful artisans, people with skill, and what? The expert enchanters. And, in, and because you all don't see how you are the righteousness of God, because you vote for things that you can't even pray for, he says, read, I will give you what? Children to be their princes, and babes shall rule over them. The people will be oppressed, and everyone by another and everyone by his brother, by his neighbor. The child will be insolent to the elder and the base toward the honorable. Isn't that going on today? Is it going on today? Remember years ago, the, the Dr. Spock and all told these parents, you cannot chastise your child. It's abuse. You can, and then they took it to the schools. You can't put a child in the corner. You can't touch a child. You can't do anything to a child. You can, you, all you can do is tell, send the child back home. Nobody can chastise your children. And some of you all have relatives, and some of you all made it, go into the school, raise hell with the teachers and the principal, and then give them, a, give them hell over that is bad behind young and y'all got. Now, if I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to your children or somebody else. But point is, now the children growing up, they don't have any, now they, the, the government through the choices that they gave us to discipline our own children, now the children grow up without any respect for any kind of authority because they tore down our own authority over our own children. Now the children don't, because they were not taught to respect our own authority, they went to school and now we, they don't respect the teacher's authority. And because when I came along, if a teacher called your house and told your parents something, when you got home, your parents ain't ask you nothing. All they say to you is, the teacher called the house. Go in there and take off them clothes, because I'm going to beat you behind. I don't care <laughs> what it was for. <laughs> and you got chastised again. And so it, it, we kept the jail census low. But now the children are rebelling against the government there in the street. Now the same people who we voted for and put them in authority are now being disrespected by the same laws. They took the authority out of the home. Now there's no authority in the school. And guess what? There's no authority in the nation. And because of that, he has given us children for our leaders. But we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Oh, there's hope, my friend. There is hope. When I know about this, this been all these children who talk to us on the news, who reported to us and they all lie with a straight face like a child lie to you and know you know they lie. You know they lie. But they won't tell it. Vacillation. Number one. Aggravate agitation. Number two, exploration. You have to explore exploration. You got to find you some wise people. Explore and find you some wise people. I'm so tired of fools. Uh, you know, people would, my grandma, I told you all that. I ain't going to tell you that again. But, you know, she would just say that every now and then I would do something real. I don't know what she saw me doing. But whatever she thought saw me doing, she would tell me, Nikki, I ain't raising you to be no fool. I guess she saw me doing something kind of crazy. You know what? You say, well, that's insulting. That's verbal abuse. Oh, it was? You better not tell that little lady that. <laughs> Grandmama, you're abusing me. You, that's verbal abuse. She said, well, I'm going to give you some more verbal abuse. 
And she going to tell you, then she could light into you with some physical abuse and tell you, you ain't going to tell me that no more. For example, here's another way. And some of you children say, well, I, I don't love you no more. You don't love me no more? Okay. And you ain't my mama and daddy. I ain't your mama and daddy? Okay, uh -huh. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you just how much I am your mama and daddy. And they beat the hell out of you. <laughs> that slipped out. <laughs> <laughs> but but it was, but we didn't have no government called 911, called DCF. You have to explore. And then we thought then, because wisdom meant to meet somebody on the sidewalk at the church, meet somebody on the telephone at the house. And the people you're talking to are just as ignorant as you are. They don't know no more than you. What makes you think that the person you talk to on the phone has more knowledgeable is more knowledgeable about your own affairs than you are yourself? I used to think that everybody was smarter than me until I find out I'm just as smart as the next fella. And they ain't got nothing on me. You count yourself down. You count yourself out. You give yourself less credit than you ought to. You take yourself down. And nobody can take you down but you yourself. And if you're down or you think you're down or if you feel like you've been put down, you did it. Somebody else might have said it. Somebody else might have brought it, but you took it. You signed for the package. Say, I'm somebody. I'm somebody. Say, I know I am. I know I am. Talk to me. Verse 16, then I commanded your judges at that time, saying, here are the cases between your brethren, and judge how righteously between a man and his brother read, and what, the, str the, str the stranger who is with you, verse 17. You shall not show partiality in judgment, and you shall what? Hear the small as well as great, and you shall not what? Be afraid of any man's presence, for the just judgment that you're doing is actually God working through you. See that? So the third thing is your declarations. Your declaration, number one, is your agitation. From your vacillation, you're going to get a whole lot of agitation. You, you're gonna get, you're gonna, you ain't happy. You're not a happy camper. Number two, you have to explore who, wisdom and, and explore who people are wise. And I hate to say it, and when I, when I get me some good advice, and, and sometimes good advice is going to cost you a little bit. Some of y'all don't want to pay nobody for nothing. You don't want to give God no money. You think you're going to keep all the money. Spend all the money, ain't going to give nobody no money, and all the, use up all the money on yourself. No, the universe will not agree with you. It's going to take it from you some kind of way. The world will take it from, the universe will take it from you some kind of way. You might be gone when it's taken away from you, but remember the story where the man came to Jesus and said to him, Jesus, command my brother to give me my part of my father's, my inheritance. And Jesus asked the young man, who made me an arbiter, a mediator, uh, an intercessor, a go-between between you and your brother? And he gives this story about a man who was a very wealthy man. He said, I'm going to tear down my barns and build bigger barns because my crops are very plentiful. And then I'm going to say, so take ease. Oh, you might, you, might, you might hold it back now. You might hold it back from God. You might hold it back from uh, the gut, you might cheat on your taxes. You might do. You might hold it back a lot of ways, and you, you, I'm gonna keep it for myself. I ain't gonna pay nobody. You don't want to pay your yard man. You try to beat everybody down on their prices. Some of y'all are terrible and notorious. Notorious. You're always trying to beat somebody out of somebody, but you don't want anybody to beat you out of yours. How can God? How can you be the righteousness of God when you want to beat everybody down there on their prices? But then you don't want nobody to beat you down on your prices. Why y'all ain't saying nothing now? <laughs> and so you got you to live and what? Let live. You got to do that. You got to learn to give and it shall be what? Give it unto you. It's a law. It works, my friend. But I'm going to hold it back. I'm going to hold it. He said, tonight your soul shall be required. And then... Whose will these things be? And he says, so it is with all of y'all who think y'all rich toward yourself and not toward God. In other words, you got to start giving. You got to start loosening up. Creflo, Creflo Dollar has started teaching on, 
or what is it called about uh, uh, tithing? He no longer believes in tithing. Well, we, we teach it, but it's not about tithing. Tithing is just 10%. But the Bible tells me the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, and the world and they that dwell therein. Ain't, you don't own a thing. I'm responsible for everything, but I don't own any of it. Everybody in here is responsible. You're responsible for everything under your possession, but you don't own a thing. I'll show you. Close your eyes and die and see how much you can take with you. Go close your eyes. No, get sick and stay sick a long time and see who's going to take care of it. So, you know, you don't want to come to the point where something has to happen to you for you to realize, I don't own nothing. <laughs> I told myself, I don't own nothing. I don't own a thing. But I'm responsible for everything. I'm responsible. Say, I'm responsible. Say, I am responsible. And I am a responsible person. But I don't own anything. The earth is the Lord's. And, and that's why some of you all get stressed out over things. You get stressed out over things. You're arguing over stuff. You want to fight and cuss and fuss over things. There's a time to do that. But not every time it is. And he says, great and small. For the judgment is of God. How God works through you. So that's your declaration. When someone comes to you with a problem, you want to do judge righteously. This is how the blessing operates through your life. This is step number two. You, step number three. That's your declaration. And he says, do not be partial. I don't care how, how much you like somebody. Don't side with them because they're your friend. They're your friend and y'all been friends a long time. But you need to tell your friend, listen, friend. I know you and I like you. And we've been friends a long time. But you're wrong. And when I finish telling you, I'm going to still be your friend. But you ain't right. Don't be siding with them just because they're your friend. It's called taking up a reproach against your neighbor for, without a cause. He says, and you shall hear small as well as great. This is a big person, an influential person. That's a nobody over here. And then you, you side with the, the big influential people and just treat the nobodies like they ain't nothing. It happens at banquets and facilities and all things like when they serve the preacher first. They serve everybody come along, fix a, I, I ain't going to get into that. But all this stuff, just, just get in line, treat everybody fairly, make sure everybody can get waited on in five minutes and they can all eat. Don't fall out with nobody over a plate of food. If your relationship ain't worth, can't hold up, and it's gonna, you're going to fall out with somebody over a plate of food, your God is your belly. And you shall not be afraid of another person's presence. I don't care whether they're the governor, the president, the mayor, the city councilman. It doesn't matter whether it's the bishop, the apostle, the priest, or whoever it is. Don't care who it is. Do not be afraid of another person's presence. Amen. 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 God made us all in his image and in his likeness. Then some of us get promoted to certain responsibilities, but we're all the same. There are no big eyes and no little you. As somebody said, at the foot of the cross, the ground is always level. And some of y'all can't handle it because I'm kind of like the average person. I, if I, I, I could come out, oh, I'm the bishop. I could get me an entourage of folks. I can get me some, uh, what you call them, the adjutants and some, some, uh, some armor bearers and bring my Bible up here and put it up here on the pulpit and uh, take my coat off. And Oh, y'all will love it because some of y'all eat this kind of mess up. But no, 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 no. Jesus said, who do y'all say I am? And who do, who, do, who do we say each other are? We are brothers and sisters in the Lord. That's the most uh, common, co commonality among all of us. Once we receive Jesus Christ, we become brothers and sisters. And you got to get out of this thing. You got to judge righteously because you cannot. It's unrighteous for you to uh, sit on top of your grown behind young ones and treat your grown Adult, it's, it's a contradiction of terms. How can you have an adult child? Listen to what you're saying. You cannot refer to your adult offspring as your child. You know what you're saying? You're confessing on them and you're trying to undermine their maturity but not, by not letting them grow up in your head. 
The problem is in your head and in your confession and in your mouth. But when, you, when they receive Christ, they become your brothers and sisters in the Lord. Give them the responsibility for their lives and love them just like you would love anybody else. Some of these children don't like y'all because you won't let them grow up. You won't give them their freedom. You won't give them no liberty. No, you, you always want to control their life and they resent you. So you got to just, they're brothers. Once they get grown, I don't care what they do. I'm not responsible for their choices and their actions. If you say, but, but they're my children. They're not your children. If you got that brother with your problem, well, put some insurance on them. Maybe you can turn them loose then. Did you hear that? You ain't get it. You ain't get it. If they're doing something, I told my children, I told you this before. Crystal wanted to go to California, and Mickey wanted to get him a motorcycle. 18 years old, the whole hard mess behind it. And the man come delivering the motorcycle to our house. I said, Walter lately here? I said, yes, yeah, speaking. Well, here's a motorcycle. I said, I ain't ordered now. <laughs> they said, well, he, are you Walter? I said, yes, I am. They said, well, well, the motorcycle is being delivered here today. I say, I ain't signed for nothing. Come to find out, Mickey got his co-worker at Publix to sign with him and then to go sign with him to get, to get a motorcycle. They delivered it to our house. I say, I ain't got nothing to do with this. Take it with you. Finally, uh, Mickey stopped paying on it or whatever he did, wasn't paying the people on it or whatever. And the man's parents came to my house. Uh, my son signed with your son to get a motorcycle. And we want to know what you're going to do about it. <laughs> you got the right one now. I ain't had nothing to do with it. If your son was a fool to go co-sign with another fool to get something, y'all let, let them work it out. I ain't got nothing to do with it. They thought that I should just jump all in it like some of y'all would do. You stay out of some stuff. Stay out of this stuff. When you, when, you know what? You wouldn't do that with me, or I would not do it with you, because we learned, we met each other in Christ, and we became bonded in Christ, and we're friends. We're friends in Christ, and we stay out of each other's business, and we don't manipulate in each other's lives because we are what friends. So you need to treat your family members like another friend. And he who shows himself friendly will have some friends. You need to make friends out of your family members. Yes. The best way you can do is to stay out their lives. And they'll come around the corner. They should be coming around the corner when she comes. They'll be coming. And they'll call you and start talking to you. And they'll ask you questions about things that you wanted to tell them a long time ago, but they wasn't ready for it. You start treating them like your brothers. Start treating them like they're your sisters. That's righteous judgment. That's a part of the righteousness of God. You can't be vacillating between mama today and brother tomorrow. No, you don't have any adult children. It's crazy. It's a contradiction. What am I going to say, pastor? Well, this is my son. That's my daughter. Show me in the scripture where any reference is made to grown folks as children on a personal level. Now, the Bible calls Israel the children of, called the nation of Israel, called the children of Israel. But you know why? Because they were servants. They were acting childish. They told them, going in the promised land, that's what we're talking about today, going in the promised land, and they didn't. Let's read. They didn't. They were vacillating. Now, notice what happened. So the, the, the next one is declaration. So in your declarations, I declare that my son is my son is my true. I just hey, he's responsible for his life. My daughters, fine. They live their lives. So because they live their lives, I can go on and live my life. Are you listening? Yes. You say, but wait a minute. But what they got, they got children. What am I about the grandbaby? If you died, if you got sick, if you didn't have the money, what what do you think they'd do? They would figure out how to live without you. I asked the Lord, Lord, I want to live. I, I, I adopted this position because, let me ask you this. I'm going to bring it right on home to you. 
Y'all got a mortgage, you got a car, you, got, you had children, you have an adult son and daughter now. Guess what? Has God come out and come in there to help you do anything? Come on. Has he ever paid a bill for you? Has he ever written a check for you? Has he come to babysit for you? Thank you. Just like you learn to depend on the Lord and to cry out and talk to him, they'll do the same. But if you are jumping there every, every moment, why, they'll never learn to call on the Lord. But if you ain't there, and they walk in the floor at night, they're going to call on it. They're going to call on somebody. And so you, you almost like reckon yourself dead. You just almost reckon yourself dead. And they'll, they'll be fine. They gonna, turn somebody and say, they're going to be fine. Turn somebody and tell them, they are fine. Say, say it to you again to yourself, say, my, my, my son and my daughters are fine. They say, born again. They are fine, Lord Jesus, they're fine. You didn't bring a, bring a whole lot of codependence in the world to depend on you. And then once they become mature and of their own right, then you can share and be join heirs together. Join, you hear me? Join heirs. Co-laborers together. Amen? And then he says this. So this is your declaration. Verse uh, number 20. 20 look, drop down to verse number 20. Read. And I said to you, you have come to the mountain of the Amorites which the Lord our God is giving us. Look, the Lord our your God has set the land before you. And now here's the word, go up and possess it. How? As the Lord our, your, our God of your fathers has spoken to you, do not fear nor be dismayed. Don't be uh, beaten down or don't go down. And that's your consultation. You know, Who's giving you advice in the consult consultation that you have? He says, now you go up as the Lord promised you. But see, we say, well, as the psych, as the shrink, as the, as the, as the counselor. Every, is everybody counseling us but the Lord? Who is the wonderful counselor? Who is your counselor? Who is your counselor? Jeremiah said, if they had stood in my counsel, then they would have heard my word. But we stand in everybody else's counsel but the counselor of God. And I can preach my heart out until, but if you don't make up your mind that I need the counsel that is if it is the counsel from God in heaven, I want to be just that real to me when I get advice and counsel. When I'm going to find, trying to find out what I want to do, I get the, the multitude of counselors, but when I got to make a decision, I want it to be to me as if God has brought me to this point where I have to make this decision. It's your consultation. He said, go up and possess it as the Lord. God of your fathers spoke to you. Has he spoken to you lately? What did he tell you? He said, you're going to live and not die. What has he told you lately? My peace I give you. Let not your heart be troubled about your son or your daughter or your quote unquote adult children. Let not your heart be troubled about your husband and your wife. You can't just, you can't raise another grown person. I don't care how long you've been married to them. They're still responsible for their own lives. But that's my... So that's your consultation. All right, let's go on to verse 22. Read. And every one of you came near to me and said, what? Send men. Yeah, send what? Send men before us. That's the first thing. And what? S search out the land for us. And what? Bring back a word to us because we don't want to do it. And bring back word to us of the way by which we know we should do it. But we want you to go. We know we should do it. We know we should go up but we want you to go and search and send men and to search out and to bring back those three, because these, looking at these three each time, and of the cities into which we shall come. And so that is deviation. Vacillation will cause you to deviate from the original plan that God set you on. 
I mean, it, it'll cause you to mess up. The vacillation will cause you to miss it every time. And you say, well, send somebody else. Wait a minute, that's all what he said. You go do it. They said that we should do it. Verse 23, read, the plain what? Please me. You say, well, Moses agreed with them to do it. Just because a man of God agrees with you don't mean it's right or it's wise. I, that's what you want to do. Well, I go on and do it. So Moses said, all right, at least that would be the first step that will build, build a little confidence in them. So we'll send somebody to see what it is like first. And when they come back, they came back with the report. But watch what happens. So that's the, they deviated using that delegation. God doesn't want us to deviate from his laws about this country, about this world, about this community in which we live in through our representatives. I ain't voting for nobody. I ain't going to vote for nobody unless I can pray for what they say they believe in and what they want to do. And if you are a firm, solid, grounded believer and you vote with the knowledge that you have, you are a hypocrite. And God going to judge you in the sense that you're going to get just what you deserve. So you got to change how you think about things. We're in this world, but we're, well, we're not what? I'm here, but I am this mess. It's too much mess going on. And it's always some mess going on. Do you know what? It's always been some mess. It's just a different mess. But it's always been a mess. The world is crazy. And it's always been like this. But we've been protected and sheltered. Thank God for a, play, a good place to be. But you got to vote your conscience. The nation that forgets about God will sooner or later be turned into a hellish environment. All right. So we, they deviated from the plan. So Moses agreed with them. All right. Verse 25. And verse 25 is the sixth one. Then they what? Then they also what? Took some of the fruit. Number one of the fruit of the land in their hands. Number two. And they brought it down to us. Number three, and they brought back word to us, saying what? Oh, yes. It is a good land which the Lord our God is given us. And they said, they said, oh, it's a good land which the Lord our God has given us. So now here we have what I call vegetation. It's vegetation or vegetables. It's plant life. They got proof of it. It's good. It's good. Notice what it says here. So that's vegetation. So you're going to find yourself having uh, sources of life in your possession. You have things, look at your life, and look, look at your life and see how you have, where you have come from and look at the sources of life that you now have. You have good health. You got a sound mind. You got peace in your heart. You got some money in your pocket. You got your bills paid. Your family in jail and prison. You got relatives who love you. You got friendly environment. You're in a word church. You hear the word of God. The word of God grows in your heart. You have joy in your heart. You got a whole plant life growing in you. You're like a tree by the rivers of water. You are more blessed and prosperous than you actually realize. Say, yes, this is a good land the Lord has given us. It's a good land. Oh, it's a good land. We thought, oh, it meant some money in the bank. It meant that, uh, that's some of that. But no, 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 no. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Peace that pass all understanding. Love that flows through your heart. Health, sound health. And a sound, I ain't going crazy. I don't care who lose their mind. I'm going to always have a sound mind. And you can live without a whole lot of medication. Throw that in there too. Amen. How can you live in this life without a, being a guinea pig for some pharmaceuticals? One medication about just maybe, but to do your best to live in a way that you came here. If you didn't come here on medication, find a way you can live without it. Amen. You don't need to put all these foreign things in your body. Amen. They say, well, now you got to get booster number one, booster number two. Booster number three, four, and five, and Dr. Fauci still got the virus. And some of y'all scared like I don't know what. The wicked flee when nobody's pursuing them. But the righteous, a bold as a lion, he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You got to live like you ain't going to die. You got to live like you're going to live. 
If you're going to live, live like you're going to live. And don't live like you're trying to die. Like you're trying to save your life. No, you ain't trying to save your life. You have life. The life of God lives in you. Greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Stop living like you're trying to save your life. And living like you have life. Jesus said what? I am the resurrection. And I am the life. You have the life of God living in you. He says this. Please them. Number that's a, the, number six is Number one is this vacillation will cause you what? Agitation. agitation. Number two. You got to get some what? Do some exploration. Number three. You, so you have to watch your declaration about your judgments and your decisions and things and represent yourself and speak up for yourself. Number four, consultation. Go, he said, go on up as the Lord said to you. Believe the voice in your own heart. The Lord speaks to you. Don't you think you're the kind of person that the Lord going to tell everybody else for he wants everybody for you to know. He's going to tell everybody else what you need to know, but he ain't going to tell you. No, he's going to tell you, and he'll confirm it through somebody else. They might just unknowingly just say something. They don't even know what they're saying, but it's a witness to you already. But he is already talking to you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Say, Christ lives in me. And God is in Christ. Christ lives in me. Christ lives in my heart. And God is in Christ. God is in Christ. And Christ is in my heart. And Christ talks to me. And the song says, and he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I'm his own. I don't belong to the government. Verse number 26. Nevertheless, the seventh thing is what we call hesitation. Hesitation is, let's read verse 26, read. Nevertheless, you all what? Y'all didn't go up. You wouldn't go up, but you, number two, you what? You rebelled against the command of the Lord your God. You knew in your knower what you were supposed to do 10 years ago. You know what you were supposed to do, but you rebelled against it. And what, verse 27, and what? And then you complained about the results in your own house, in your own tent. When it didn't go well with you, now you're complaining. You're ready to fight somebody over something. Complaining. And said what? Then you feel like, now here, notice what he says. This is hesitation because now you're saying what? Because it didn't turn out, now you're going to blame God as in control. What did you say? Because the Lord what? Hates us. He has brought us up out of the land of Egypt. What did he bring us out for? To deliver us where? Into the hand of the Amorites. And the third thing is what? To deliver, to destroy us. Verse 28 says for, all right, that's, so, that's the, so in other words, that's hesitation. When you hesitate and you vacillate, you end up hesitating. And when you hesitate, you end up not doing what you know you're supposed to do. And when you don't do what you know you're supposed to do, you are in rebellion. And then you, 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 uh, you start complaining against something you, that you brought on your own self. That's why I don't have any problem. Any problem that I have, I brought it on myself. And every problem I brought on myself, I can get out of it. Every problem you ever have, you brought it on yourself. You say, well, my husband won't let me do it. My wife won't let me do it. Oh, you can get out of that. Don't tell me you can't. You, you ain't, that, ain't the, that ain't the first time you've been disagreed. And so, whatever, the Bible says, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, they have no temptation taken you, my friend, but such as is common to man. But God is what? Faithful. And he will not allow you to suffer you to be tempted and tried and tested above your ability, but will with that temptation and that trial and that test, he will always provide you a what? A way of escape. Say, I can get out of it. I can get out of it. You can get out of anything you got yourself into. Loneliness, sadness, grief, whatever you got yourself into. A bad relationship. Don't tell me you can't get out of it. You've been divorced. You got out of it. You've been in the hospital. You got out of it. 
You've been to the doctor, you brought health, came back, you got out of sickness. You've been troubled, you got out of trouble. You've been worried, you got out of worry. Don't tell me you can't get yourself out of anything you get yourself into, you can get yourself out of it. You can even get yourself out of life, my friend. You get tired of, the, you're getting tired of living, you can go jump off the bridge. Ain't nobody gonna stop you. One lady called me many years ago. Pastor Layla, you all would know her if I called you her name. She is still alive today. She called me and told me, Pastor Layla, I'm getting ready to commit suicide. See, number one, if you're gonna commit suicide, they ain't gonna call you to tell you. So I told her, I said, well, sister, when you do it, call me. God is my witness. I told her, when people feel like they're victims, when they've vacillated themselves, and they get in the agitation, and they get, need to explore new opportunities and ways to live, when they get into things where they, their consultation, and they, they, get, they have declarations that they have made, they, they, break, they paint themselves into a corner, but they gotta come out, you gotta come out. Say, say come, out. come out. Turn to somebody and say, come out. come out. You've been in there too long. Verse 46 says, and you, they remained in Kadesh many days according to the days that they spent there. How long are you going to spend there? How long are you going to spend there? How long are you going to spend there? You've been worrying too long. You've been fretting too long. You've been sick too long. You've been worried too long. You've been thinking about dying too long. I used to be scared of cancer. They told me my mama died, and then she died of cancer. That was a lie, but they told me that, and that tree grew, and I thought my, my wife gonna die. When you have children, you're gonna die. And that lie grew up in my life, and so I, and that, and I thought about that, and it was a lie, but I believed it, and believed it was to be true, and to me it was true even though it was a lie. Do you know you can believe some things and it's a lie, but because you believe it, and even though it's a lie, if you don't know it's a lie, and you believe it to you, it's the truth. And that's what's going to take place in your life. And that's why he wants us to be transparent before the world. Just tell it like it is. If they don't like it, I'm sorry. But tell it just like it is. If they don't like it, I'm sorry. You shouldn't have asked me. So you've been there too long. So, number one, when you vacillate, he says, your problems, your burdens, and your complaints, that's what? Number one is what? Agitation. Then he says, but you choose some wise and understanding and knowledgeable men from among you. Vote for the right kind of people. Don't vote for somebody who's going to look you in the face. They're going to tell you they're going to abort every black child that you know. And they're going to fund every program to get rid of every Negro that you know. And you're gonna, they're going to promise you, give you everything, and promise you anything that they can promise you. You say, well, I, I, well what are we going to do? What are we going to do? That's the, the government is one thing, but you're voting your conscience. We can change things. Suppose your parents had aborted you. Look what the world would have missed. Look at life, what life could be. You say, well, if you've done it, you've had an abortion and you had bad counsel or you just uh, were unwise or you, you committed that, God forgives that. That child, David says, uh, I shall see this child again for to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So the child goes back to be with the Lord. But you rob God of the opportunity to bring somebody else here so whose life he could work in and give them a chance to work out that salvation. So if you had an abortion, God forgives you. Don't hold that against yourself. That abortion is just, there's no, see, there's no big sins, and there's no little sins, and there's no big lies, and there's no little, little lies. A lie is a lie, a sin is a sin. Ain't no big ones. Don't get hung up on the presence of people and the presence of things. So if you commit, had an abortion, just said, Lord, I thank you for forgiveness. And just like, well, what's the difference in an adulterer, a homemong, a liar, and an abortionist? What's the difference? Tell me the difference. But see, we'll condemn people. 
Well, that sin was, that's murder. My grandmama cut, up, cut my teeth on that. God can forgive. This is stuff we heard. That's why I like my Bible. This is my Bible. <laughs> I like my Bible. She would tell me. Well, this is, they were trying to teach us based upon, like Job, there was a day when the sons of God came and the devil came along among them and we're trying to figure out why Job was catching so much hell and why his life was so hard and why he lost his seven sons and three daughters and all of his wealth. And so they come up with this story and say, well, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and the Lord said, and the devil came along with them and, and they said, well, then the Lord said, well, have you considered my servant Job? And they tell that lie and tell that story out there. And, Joe, and so they heard, told these things and we've heard these things and they've grown up in us like trees and they're in your heart and you got to root that stuff up he told Jeremiah in Jeremiah 1 5 I have appointed you to a prophet to pluck up and to pull down to overthrow you got to overthrow some of these things that have been planted in your lives you got to dig it up I had to dig up fear my grandmama told me well Mickey God can forgive everything but self murder Show that to me in the Bible. If you commit suicide, God won't forgive you. If you commit suicide, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Don't care who did it. But that was the traditional to try to encourage you to live, enjoy life a little bit more. In other words, God will forgive everything but, but suicide. Therefore, make sure you don't commit suicide. You might catch hell in life, but don't ever commit no suicide. But this is tradition of men, which makes the word of God of none effect. And you got to just live, you got to grow in what? Grace. Yes. You got to grow, you got to grow, my friends. You got to learn to start growing in grace. That's another thing. Christians are mean as hell. Now, I used to be mean myself. And I have every, every streaks of it now. How about y'all? Some of y'all have streaks of meanness. Don't act like y'all don't hear up in here. I start a prayer line up in here. And I lay hands on your ears. Yeah. Yeah. You have streaks of meanness. You're agitated by something. You're vacillated on something. You don't like the results of it. And I, but, we, but, I, but I hear the whole Holy Spirit telling me constantly. And I used to quote it all the time. And I still do. Second Peter. Grow in grace. Stop being so hard on people. We used to be hard on people. I used to be hard on people. A lot of y'all used to be hard on you. are a Pharisee. We was a whole lot of, we were, Pharise, we were raised by Pharisees. We were taught by Pharisees. Our pastors were Pharisees. Ain't nobody had no grace. Ain't no grace. Pharisees, Sadducees. We ain't know nothing about no life. Obey a God gonna kill you. But he says grow, just like a tree. Just start growing in the favor and the blessing of God. And while you're growing, make sure you grow in the knowledge yes. of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because yes. my friend, once you start growing, yes. Yes. you gonna start growing. Yes. Yes. And when you grow, you're growing like a tree but the tree that you're growing is the knowledge that you have about Jesus Christ in your life who you are what you can do and what you can have where you can go and what you can be and as you grow in grace your life becomes sweeter and sweeter as the days go by it's a good thing to be a believer it's a wonderful thing to be a Christian but it is a great thing to be anointed by the spirit of the living God to face all your demons to chase the devil out your house to get every fear out of your life to get every worry from, from anywhere around you that you shall walk and not be afraid you should live and not be worried you should have joy unspeakable. Feel with glory to the honor of the Lord Jesus Christ. But you got to grow in grace. Grow out your old mean self. 
you got streaks of meanness. I had to lay hands on myself and tell me, Walter Layla, you ain't right. Sometimes I'm very nice to be around and sometimes I don't even like myself. I know I got some witnesses up in here. You got to tell yourself. You want to be a nice person, a lovely person. Why, 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 why? That's why you let your children alone. Then they're adults now, they ain't no children. Let them alone. Let them grow in grace. And then they're not, they gonna grow, they gonna grow. Say they gonna grow. Say they are growing just like I did. And uh, while you live before them, your light is actually shining. You are like the light that they need. That's why you need to go on and live. Vacillation. The seven of those 15. Deuteronomy chapter 1. Vacillation. You can do anything in life. You can achieve anything in life. And I really believe this. But I'm going to tell you this. It won't happen unless you do this one thing. The Bible says in Psalm 23, He prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies. And God has a table. And His table is surrounded by His enemies. And if God had to deal with his enemies, you have to deal with yours. Whether it's fear of cancer, fear of death and dying, worry, anxiety, panic attack, frustration, irritation, and whatever it is, health situations, talk to yourself. Talk to your body. Tell your body, you ain't going to control me. I control you. Don't let your body tell you what to do. You tell your body what to do. The Bible says the spirit of a man, the spirit of a man will sustain him in the time of the infirmity in his body. Your body is not in charge. You are. You talk to your body. You tell your body. You ain't dying with cancer. You ain't going to have no stroke. You're not going to have a heart attack. Talk to your body. Tell your body. You're going to be just fine. You're going to stop worrying. You're going to sleep at night. Talk to your body. You're going to tell your body. You're going to stop shaking. You're in charge. And God made us in his image. And in his likeness. And then he gave us a body. I shall live. And not die. And when I say I shall live. I mean it. I mean I will live. And you will live, and you will live well, and you will live good, and you will live with opportunities, and you will live with grace, and you will live with love and joy. You will live. You live, you live, you live. Learn to live the life that we sing about. He said, I came, I came that they might have life, a good life, a healthy life, a long life, a joyous life, a peaceful life. In the name of Jesus.
Worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. You got it, let's show you love. Before men, those men are part of your family and women, your neighbors, your community, your church, your neighborhood. Let your light shine. And I found that the more you let your light shine, it's like a contradiction almost. The brighter you let your light shine, the more people can see their way to the Lord. The more they will see their way to the Lord. You are the light, my friends. You are it. You are the righteousness of God. And everything you do, every way you vote, every attitude that you have, every word that come out your mouth, you are representing the righteous father and you are the righteousness you are all that he got my friend you his hands if he had a hand they're yours if he has feet they're yours if he has a voice it's yours if he has a mind it's yours if he has strength it's yours. What are you doing? He says, if you're not gathering with me, you're really scattering. Are you the righteousness of God? And I don't care how much righteousness you've done in the past. In the day of your transgression, none of your righteousness that you have done will be remembered to your credit in the day of your trouble. I have found it and I have seen it. There's something, I can't explain it, it's not a manipulative tool, there's something about what the old folk used to call the ark of safety. It's something about being with this kind of an atmosphere and this kind of environment where you get your mind renewed, you get a different attitude, you get counsel, you get some advice. The Holy Spirit talks to you. You get renewed in your thinking. You look at the world differently. And when you do that, that's the Lord talking to you. That's the best counselor you'll ever have. And I used to counsel people that they come up and sit up in my office two hours, an hour, an hour and a half. And I had to learn from Dr. Price. If they are unwilling to come to a service and sit in three services don't give them an appointment because if you 
you can't convince a person in an office what they are unwilling to hear in the assembly of God. Are you listening? We got out of the appointment business. You know what, what my, you know what my appointments are? This is the counseling session right here. It's the wonderful counselor. It's the everlasting father. He's the prince of peace. This is a counseling session, my friend. Open your heart and open your life to receive the joy of the Lord. Amen. That's how you get healed. That's how you get encouraged. That's how you get strengthened. You get renewed. You get invigorated. You get excited. You get motivated. You get enthusiastic. Just keep on going. And before you know it, you'll be 120 years old. Your eyes won't be dim. Your strength won't be abated. You'll always, you have, you have, you have, you have a, 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 a stride, and you, a stride. And get, and, and it's good to just praise the Lord. Why? You need to have some range of motion. You can't even reach up high. Ah, my shoulder hurt. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, it's good to be here, Amen. I love my God, I love my church fellowship, I love the word of God, and I love Jesus. Now, if you don't, if you don't understand all that, I can't help you no more. Because I'll tell you what I really like, I really, I hope, I think I convinced you this morning that I really enjoy it, right? I love it. Here is the Lord our God is one. You should love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all your soul, and all your mind, and all your strength, and your neighbor just as much as and no less than you love yourself. Amen? All right, well, that's it for today. I'm going to go to Hawaii next year in June, and I'm telling you all this. If you want to go, we got 28 room, room for 28 people. we just going just because we can. And uh, put it, again, the, your table, he prepares a table for you in the presence of your enemies. If you want to go, you say, I don't see the money. You ain't going to never see the money unless you put it on the table. Say, I'm going. And once you tell your subconscious mind that and you tell the world, you made a decision. You're no longer vacillating. Once you make that decision, that's how we go. That's how we go places to do things. We ain't never had money. But it's some kind of way the means to show up. Amen? I'm just telling you all that. So come on and go because I'm going to take you to heaven with me. And I ain't dying no time soon. I said I ain't dying no time soon. And I hope you're not either. Start living like you're going to live. And stop living like you're trying to save yourself from dying. Amen. Please stand to your feet. My life is in you, Lord, my strength. They tell me that thing knocked off. Oh, there it is. It's back on now. Y'all pray for this equipment. As a matter of fact, we just had a volunteer who asked if they would want to work for the ministry. And, look, and Monica asked me, she said, well, Pastor Layla, uh, uh, y'all got any work around the church? I like to work for the church part-time. Y'all pray for the ministry. Pray for the giving of the ministry and for giving because we want to hire Monica to work for the church. Amen? There she is right there. And she's Hazel's daughter. Hazel worked for the church 25 years as a pastor here and she passed away and we you know so she won't going to continue that legacy of her mama so and I just thank God for also for Joe and his family and I, I put that picture out there in that lobby and I put Hazel's picture out there in that lobby because these two people they took this ministry and they did work and they worked tirelessly and they worked examples of service so much so that every, every deacon in here is ordained after the order of Joseph and Margaret, hard-working folk who love Jesus. And that's a part of your righteousness. That's your righteousness, my friend. Don't ever stop working. Don't let people tell you, child, I ain't gonna go to church today. Well, that's them. But it's you. It's you. It's you. It's between you and the Lord. Amen. So, 
we expand in the ministry. We got a guitar and a drummer, and we continue to. We ain't quitting now. I hope you don't think we are gonna quit, but we continue to grow. Everything else grows, and so does the ministry. Raise your hand and meet mine. Y'all pray for Marva. Marva is in, in Presbyterian home. She has. Uh, they had to amputate part of her, part of her leg portion of that. Y'all pray for her. She says she was in pain. If we make our confession. Y'all, if, if, y'all work on your circulation. You do a little walking if you need to. You get yourself going. Don't sit in front of your desk and your computer and like that's all you're going to do. You get out and get back. You know, we all wanted a job. I'm tired of working hard. I want me a desk job. We ain't know it's going to kill us. Amen. So get you some involved. Get, back, get, back, get involved. Keep yourself in service. Amen. The grace. This is the benediction. Speech. And diction that is good. Bene diction. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God the love of God again the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit the communion of the Holy Spirit the communion with the Holy Spirit with you with you is with you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the the Lord Jesus Christ. and everybody said amen they say the man again. Amen. And they say the man again. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming. And you're dismissed. Have a wonderful day.